realize what I'm looking at, and I was like, oh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna kill myself today. But yeah, I quickly realized my friend was just going fucking ham with that phone. He was just straight up jerking off, and I saw him doing it. And I immediately hang up the call, right? I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm just thinking, like, a million different things going through my head. I'm like, why well, know at the time it was an accident? I actually thought for a minute he was doing it on purpose. Fuck with me? Or maybe he's into some weird stuff and just wants people to watch him do it. But I was like, no, I can't fucking do this anymore. I was just sitting there thinking, like, why? I don't see this sound as weird as fuck, but if I'm gonna do that, if I'm gonna watch some fucking porn, I turn my webcam around. I throw that bitch out the fucking room, dude. I'm afraid of, like, someone just sitting in a room with, like, 80 computer monitors, but everyone's just faces on it, like, watching them through their fucking webcams or some shit. I'm not trying to be, like, one of those people that, like, gets a bug bite and they're like, fucking nanobots had me, I'm being spied on. But it's just weird, dude. I can't, like... I can't comfortably sit here and do something like that and just know there's a webcam staring at me. Even if I'm plugged, I just get weird about it. Alright, anyway, off that fucking webcam porn rant. He calls me back, right? He's like, what happened to the call, bro? I was like, uh, I came in my room after I walked out and he was just kind of sitting in the chair, uh, doing the, the knuckle shuffle and I just, I don't know what to fucking do at that point, but I'm not going to sit here and watch you. He's like, what? I was like, I saw what you were doing. You left your webcam up. Like, are you trying to joke around right now? Like, you playing stupid? He's like, I'm dead serious. I turned it off beforehand. And he starts raging. He's like, I fucking hate Skype, dude. I fucking hate it. It's so bad. I was like, bad or not, dude? Like, why did you leave your webcam plugged in and do that shit? That's so, so weird. He's like, dude, I just hit the button. I turned the fucking camera off. I was like, so what, man? You just ended the call like a normal person would. They just end the call. And then you just go ham. You don't gotta stay in the call with your friend who doesn't want to stay in the first place. You just hang up and do it and call back, dude. That's all you gotta do. Yeah, I just really felt so weird. It was so fucking weird. Like you, you talk to your friends and you can like be close with them. You can maybe just see their pants down on Skype and you don't know whether it's like a joke or they actually are trying to say something or it's an accident. It's just fucking weird. The funniest part about the whole thing, actually it's not that funny, it's kinda of fucked up, but he didn't talk to anyone for like a month and a half after this. Straight up cut contact with everyone online. Just kinda of like proceeded to normal life. And he came back like almost two months later. And was like, yeah, I just, I was a little bit ashamed of myself, bro. I had to take a break. It was an accident, I swear. Me and my friend literally thought he fucking died. We were like, where did he go? It's been like a month. We straight up thought he like literally just killed himself over fucking getting caught watching porn. We were like actually worried for a little bit. But yeah, he's still around. I talk to him to this day. It's not awkward anymore. I mean, when I talk about it, I still kind of cringe a little bit. But as I do with a lot of these videos, he cringed along with me and enjoyed uh, this fucking very awkward story. Please leave a like if you guys did enjoy it. That's pretty much the end. I mean... I asked him about this, I was like, do you care if I talk about that? Because I kind of caught you, it was funny. He's like, just please don't name drop. I was like, no, I won't. And yeah, I told him I wouldn't, and that's it. Just kidding, his name is... Okay, I'm actually just fucking kidding, I just put that in to scare him. But yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video today. Please leave a like if you guys did enjoy it. Subscribe if you're new. Leave your stories in the comments down below. And yeah, see Yo, what's up everybody, it's Austin or Luna, in today's video, I'm sorry about not posting the last two days, I just kind of took a break, I know people are like, dude, just stop fucking apologizing, who cares, man, and I know most of you don't give a shit, but there's like that small, small percentage, like that few people, that literally want to chop my fucking head off every time I mess them up, so, yeah, but anyway, today I'm talking about something that's really, really funny, and just, when I saw this, it's like a funny story, this is pretty recent, actually, like, this just took place a few weeks ago, in the very beginning of October, and it all starts with me sitting in my fucking room, literally just working on a video, right? Editing something, I get a call from my friend, he want to know if I had come from New York City yet. I said yes, and yeah, I don't have any plans, and I'll be free. And he's like, alright, cool, well, we're going to this party. And he says the name of the kid that's, like, hosting the party at his house. And the name sounded oddly familiar. I didn't know this kid personally, but the name sounded familiar because he said his last name, and that's what clicked in my head. And this guy that was hosting his house party was my old high school principal's son. So yeah, my old high school principal, she had this son, and I didn't really know him very well, like I said, but this is my first time really hanging out with him at this party. And I didn't think much of it. I was like, you know, just because your mom's a principal doesn't mean you're some fucking dickhead. It doesn't really work like that. I know plenty of friends of mine that have, like, parents or teachers and shit like that, family members. And plus, he's older than me, and I just kind of figured he was on his own at this point. Like, this guy was hosting this party, probably at his own house. You know, I didn't think he still lived with his mom or some shit, because probably not a good idea still with your mom, he's a principal of a high school that you used to go to, you can throw a huge fucking house party there, you know, just not the best idea, so the day of the party
party comes, I get picked up by my friends, we go to this house, and I walk in, and I meet this dude for the first time, I've never seen him before, but I never really got to talk to him, I kind of said what's up to him, we were talking, and I asked him, I was like, hey, does your mom still work at the high school that we used to go to, and he's like, yeah, she does, she's doing a pretty good job, I was like, nice, nice, and as I'm like, I realized, this is not his house, like, there's no way a fucking guy who throws house parties and is going into college decorates a house like this, like, everywhere and shit like that and the table was decorated and just you could tell there was some mom work going on so i was like dude do you still live with her and he's like yeah this is her house like, does she care that you're just throwing a fucking huge party here he's like nah she's not going for like seven hours i was like cool i'm trying to make sure because this lady i'm not trying to like be mean but i swear she used to literally shit in her cereal herself every morning she was so mean at school like she fucking hated me and all my friends and i mean it's understandable i'm kind of a dick sometimes but well not dick but dick kind of annoying to deal with me, but even on days where I was super good, I'd come in and not say a word and just walk by her, and she'd stare at me like I just got done fucking feeding up puppies for fun, like, she was just so mean, so I was kind of scared, like, I was like, alright, fuck, this, this girl comes home while we're having this party, she used to be my principal, dude. she's gonna treat me like that, so anyway, life goes on, everything was actually really, really good, I kind of just stopped worrying about it, because I was like, there's no way this lady's coming home, it's been so many hours already, and at about the five hour mark, she came home. My fucking young mom, aka my old principal, came home and caught everyone partying. And just like, I really wasn't too worried. Like, there's not that much you can do besides kick them out, so no big deal, right? Not like in high school where she could, like, give me a detention slip or like, scream at me a fucking suspension or some shit. Nothing like that. But she was actually so cool. Like, I never really saw her outside of school. And in school, she was a fucking raging, angry ass. So, seeing her nice for once was really, really cool. And she was so nice to everyone at the party for some reason. I thought she was going to come in with, like, a fucking bat and proceed to just fuck us up. And then, like, do some magic trick and make us go back, like, four years in time and be back in high school and fucking give us a But she was being fairly cool. I mean, she was a little bit pissed off because, you know, a bunch of random people in her house, not too cool. But she came in and she covered to my friend, okay, her son, and she was like, kind of just, like, going back and forth with her. She like went into her room and shut the door, and my friend just came over to everyone. He's like, "All right, guys, you're all gonna have to start leaving." Like she's kind of pissed, but no big deal. We'll have another one soon. So people start leaving, and I'm like, oh, "Cool, I'll help him clean up a little bit because I feel bad, right?" So I'm helping him clean up, and about ten minutes goes by of us just cleaning, and she comes into her room to help us clean up a little bit, you know, to clean up her house, and I just smelled something really familiar, right? And I was like, "Okay, maybe that's just from the party, right?" Because people were smoking weed and shit, so I didn't really think much of it. But then I kind of looked over to the room, and I could see, like, smoke in there. And I was like, is my principal fucking smoke weed? And I just kind of look at her, and I was like, are you smoking? And she, like, squints her eyes and smiles. And she just straight up goes, that's illegal. And we all just start fucking hysterically laughing, because most of us went to the same school. I had seen the principal high as fuck. It's hilarious. I don't know, it's funny. She's kind of, like, hiding. It's like, not a good idea. Worse than me trying to hide shit like that. And yeah, we cleaned everything up, got the house looking kind of decent and not as fucked up as it was. And then we just kind of talked for like 20 minutes and caught up and stuff like that. And I could not stop fucking laughing because she was so just, she was high as hell. It was hilarious. Like seeing my old principal just high as hell talking to us, it was hilarious. And I told her, I was like, remember all the shit you used to give me for just hitting a vape? I remember once I hit a vape in the hallway and she saw it and she was like, you're going to kill yourself if my vape's doing that. Now you're out here doing the devil's lettuce. I don't even think she understood what I was saying. She was just so fucking high. She was just laughing at everything. And yeah, we ended up leaving. I walked out with my friend. And my friend, the cool the party, came out with us. And he was like, yeah, sorry about her. I was like, dude, don't even be sorry. That shit was the funniest thing I've seen in so long. Yeah, she's been struggling for like six months now. I was like, is she going to be good doing that? Like, does she still work at the school? He's like, I have no fucking idea. And yeah, we just kind of drove home after that. And we're left with just, just fucking hilarious. Imagine having a party at someone's house and figuring out that the person else in the party is your principal's son and seeing your principal come home, catch everyone, and just proceed to deal with it by getting high as fuck and laughing about it. Like, just, what the fuck? But yeah, that's pretty much the end of the story. I just thought it was really, really funny and I wanted to share the experience on here. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please leave a like if you guys did enjoy it. If you have any crazy, just funny stories like this one, please leave them in the comments down below. I would love reading them. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the
going on, guys? Austin FFA here, or Luna. So I have a crazy story for you today, or like a... I think it's more fun than crazy, but you're gonna hear about it in a minute. So this took place in the beginning of sophomore year, and if you don't know what sophomore year is, it's your 10th grade year. And um, this is when I wasn't smoking weed, which made it the more funny slash nerve-wracking it was. And uh, it just made it more, you know, nerve-wracking than it already was. So I'm gonna get into it. Um, before, actually no, before I get into it, I'm gonna give you some background knowledge. My school, the teachers are chill as long as you don't fuck with them. If you don't fuck with the teachers, they're not gonna fuck with you. And that's a simple rule at my school. And that rhymed, that was cool. Oh, that, oh my god, I'm, I'm an MC today in, uh, this commentary. That was really cheesy, but, uh, you know, this commentary is so, uh, easy. Okay, that was fucking awful. I need to get back on topic, I'm an idiot. Um, I, but, <laughs> okay, anyway. So, we would go to school every day, this is in 10th grade, me and my one friend, and we had the same first period math class every single day, um, and math class sucked, I don't like math, but, uh, you know, a lot of people don't, but, um, I didn't like, it's not that I didn't like it because it was math, I didn't like it because I just, no matter how hard I tried, I wasn't good at it, so, one day, we went, me and my one friend, to math class, and, um, he smokes a lot of weed. He gets stoned on the daily. He comes into school ripped every single day. And he actually used to sell a lot of weed to me in the school bathroom. I've actually, I think I've mentioned it in videos before. Um, I actually have another story about that that I'm going to save. But um, I've mentioned it before. He sells weed to me in the bathroom all the time. And uh, he's just a funny kid. We had the same first period math class together every single day. And the reason why is because me and him actually got kicked out of our original math class and uh, put into this like special ed math class was it's kind of embarrassing but whatever so we went to this math class this um in particular day and we were waiting outside her door to uh because she wasn't there yet and we had to wait for her to unlock the door so we're sitting outside her door talking about the highest we've ever been which is hilarious to me because we're literally like publicly speaking about how strong we've gotten before in front of everyone but we didn't care like like i said the teachers are pretty mellow and as long as you don't you know fuck with them they usually don't retaliate on you so, we, the teacher finally got there in mid-conversation about how we used to get stoned, and uh, I'm pretty sure she heard us, but she just kind of walked right by us and unlocked the door, and uh, that's when we went inside. Now, um, keep in mind, my friend was ripped. I told you, he comes to school every day stoned. We were sitting in class, just chilling out, uh, getting ready to do our warm-up, and she called on him to come up to the board and write an equation down, which is hilarious, because, uh... Even if I'm on the spot, I can't do that good. But he was on the spot stoned. Like, she, like, called him up on the spot and was like, write this equation down. And it, it wasn't even a hard thing to do. The equation was on the chalkboard. All he had to do was copy it onto the smart board. And he literally, all right, guys, I didn't mention this, but he has ADHD. So he will say whatever the fuck comes to mind, and he does not care how or when he says it. So he comes up to the board and goes, I'm too fucking high for this. And he said it under his breath, and I was like, oh, my God, what are you doing? And she was like, what? And uh, he's like, nothing, nothing. And she's like, okay. And she kind of laughed under her breath. She knew what he said, obviously. And we all did. And we all kind of chuckled because she's a really nice lady. I know her to this day. Um, she actually works at high school now. And uh, she's just a really nice lady and never really did anything about us smoking. But um, he said it again. He literally was like, uh, he's trying to copy it. And he fucked up. He was trying to put the X in the, uh, I think he was trying to, I don't know where he was trying to do, but he put the X in the wrong place in the equation. And he literally fucked up and then said, he laughed again and said, I'm really too stoned for this. And she was like, do you need to leave the room or something? Are you okay? Do you need a drink? And then he literally turned around and said, I'm too stoned for this. And I was sitting, I started I started dying, guys. I couldn't help myself. I was cracking up. And, um, we were just sitting there like, oh my God. And, uh, I stood up and I was like, you know what, man, I'll help you out. So I went over to the, uh, chalkboard or the smart board. And was, I easily just copied the equation onto the, onto the uh, smart board, from the chalkboard. And, uh, if you guys know what a smart board is, it's like a touch screen chalkboard that you can, like, pull videos up on and stuff like that. They're, like, in every classroom nowadays. So, I wrote the equation down. And that's when she came up. She's like, good job, Austin. You can go sit down now. And, uh, she said to my friend, she's like, as for you, little pothead, go sit down back at your desk. And I started losing it at that point, because... She's just such a funny lady, we started dying, and, um, he's like, what's wrong with pot, huh? And then she's like, nothing's wrong with pot, if you can provide a, a, a reasonable argument for why it should be legalized, I have nothing wrong with it. And I was like, have you tried it before? She's like, no, it's, it, it never did me any good, and I was like, so you have tried it? She's like, no. I'm like, you want to try some right now? It's a joke. I said it as a complete joke. I was laughing because she was cracking jokes about weaving my friends.
so I thought it'd be funny to ask her. And all of a sudden, she gave me the straightest face ever. She looked at me and she was like, what? And I was like, oh, fuck, I just pissed off the nicest teacher in the school. I am fucked. I, I immediately like, like, oh, no, I'm going to get suspended. I'm going to get suspended. I'm going to get thrown out of school. Fuck this. And uh, at the time, um, this was, like, when I was finally clear of all my, like, bullshit trouble I got into. And I was finally getting off all the, you know, all the bullshit I've ever gotten in trouble for. And I didn't want to get back in that hole that I dug myself into. And I immediately was like, oh, I'm sorry. And she's like, I'm just kidding. And she smiled. And from that, that was the craziest. It was the biggest suspension. Like, my friend even made a creepy face when she did this. And I was like, this is awful. Like, we looked at each other like, wow, I just fucked ourselves. Like, we're going to get suspended for this. So she, like, basically cracked a smile and said, I'm just messing with you, Austin. You guys, go sit down. And we sat down. From that day on, we were, like, always afraid to joke with her because we thought that she was going to, like, fucking get us there. And, um... She's just a fucking joker, and I thought it was so funny because she would always just, like, joke about things that you would never picture teachers joking about. I remember she used to literally, I think she used to be a stoner back in the day, honestly, guys. Like, I think she was a stoner teacher, but it, it's a, in my opinion, that's a pretty crazy story. Like, it was more of a joke, but the fact that she got so suspenseful when I said it, like, she made the weirdest face, like, she made the most serious face. She looked like she was about to put my ass on a plaque. Hang it above her chalkboard and then like burn a fire. Like, crazy shit like that. That's what I thought. I thought I was gonna have like a fire under my ass. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, I don't know why I thought of that. I think I've been watching too much SpongeBob. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed the story. If you did, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Thank you guys so much. We had a thousand likes on this video. Like, thank you. You guys are the best. Um, um, if we get a thousand likes on this video, if that happens, and I'll probably cry. But uh. I love you guys so much. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment below if you guys are like stoner teachers yourself. I'll see you later. So today we finally have our story. Crazy, crazy life story. One of the craziest it's going to be on my channel. Or not, maybe it won't be, I don't know, but, um, you know, you guys, one of my most frequent asked questions, have you tried acid, have you tried LSD, have you done this, and, um, I usually used to, I'm not gonna lie, when I first started YouTube, I told people no, I was like, no, I don't do acid, don't do it, um, I've tried it a few times, um, a quite, a, quite a few of those times, um, uh, if you want to see, like, another trip story after this, leave a like, um, you know, Basically, I didn't want to do a story about this on my channel because I didn't want to make anyone like think that they should go out and do it. So I'm gonna start the before I start the story. I'd like to say before you watch this, um, you know, acid. I do not condone the use of it. I don't think you should go out and do it just because you watch a video on it. And uh, make sure you know, stay away from it. Stick to weed, nothing but. You know? So anyway, now let's get to the story. Um, so okay, one year back when um, I was at the very ending stages of being like a pothead where I used to smoke all the time. This was literally like four weeks before I had a attack that like made me stop smoking and stuff like that. So I had a friend, a particular friend who was a very big druggie. And when I say druggie, I mean like straight up, like he would do acid, he would do mushrooms, he would do stuff worse than that. He was always just trying to get a quick buzz and no matter how he got it, he wanted to do it. So, you know, whether it was weed, if he didn't have weed, he'd go into something more intense, way more worse for you. And uh, I always tried to get him to get off some of the shit, but you really can't. So I just had to deal with it. And um, he used to offer me stuff all the time. And I always used to say, no, nah, fuck that. No, no. Don't get that on my face. So one day, it was 2.30, school just got out. I walked to his house after school. And he had, I think, I'm trying to think of how many tabs he had. He had quite a few tabs. stayed in your system for years at a time when I'm pretty sure I, it doesn't. I'm pretty sure it stays in your system for like a day or something. I don't know. But, uh, that could be wrong too. I don't know anything about this. So I was clueless going into the situation. Keep that in mind. That's why I'm such a new. So he had shitloads of acid packs. And um, I was convinced that he was selling them, but I guess not. I guess he just had a lot. He liked doing acid. And so we got into his house. We were watching TV, smoking weed. And um, he looked at me and he gave me like a grin and I asked him, I was like, what's up? And he's like, so 
so I be down to try and I was like, what? He's like, you know, LSD acid. Like, you know, like, Dude, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know. I was curious. I'm not gonna lie. I was curious. But at the same time, I was like, no, acid, you're an idiot. Don't do it. It's bad. You know, you could have a bad trip. You could freak yourself out. And a lot of people are So, I looked at him and I said, I'm gonna take you one day. He's like, what if that one day was today? And I was like, nah, I, I don't think so. Bad. He's like, but what if he did? And he pulled out his wallet. He pulled out his wallet. He said, what if he did? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, come on. Just one time tonight, let's do it. And I was like, seriously, dude? Like, it's a school night. Like, we're, we're it's, it's a school night. Like, come on. And he's just like, no, come on, man. Let's just, let's just do it. And he kept laughing and saying, come on, let's just do it. And at the point, uh, at this point, I wasn't like saying yes, but I was just laughing at him. And he kept saying, come on, man. What if you did? Come on. And I was laughing. And uh, he's like, come on, just seriously. So he pulled up, in his wallet, he had this little pocket where he would usually keep like a card. He, he takes out a few tabs of his LSD. And then he's like, have you ever seen a tab of them? They're like, they're like, they're like, they're like wares, and they have little drops of LSD on them. And, uh, you know, there's like four or five of them right there. And, um, I didn't want to do, like, I just told him, I was like, if I was to ever do acid, I don't want to do, like, half of one. Like, I don't want to do this and stuff. I'm really scared. I don't want to smoke. And I was like, he's like, come on, dude, just take it. And he handed it to me. And at this point, I was like, dude, I'm not doing this unless we have a spot. He doesn't want to bother me. He's like, I'm watching the best trip. Well, he stays sober. And he's like, hey, he's like, So the spotter came over. I asked for a spotter, and uh, I called him a and I had to trust. So my friend came over, and, um, you know, we took two tabs when he got there. So he was there for about 15 minutes before we did this. He, we blazed up before we did this, which I don't like to do. I don't think tripping and being high is a good thing. Uh, so when I took this acid, um, I only took one tab, nothing else. Um, I couldn't handle anything else. I don't know if you guys know I'm a skinny kid. I'm a lightweight. I can't handle anything else. So I took one tab. I put it on my tongue. And people say something on it, like, helps the, the acid go quicker. But I just put it on my tongue, let it dissolve. So it's like, I can't, time was very bad when this happened. But I remember a few moments later, like, maybe an hour in, not known. I'm trying to think. Maybe almost an hour in. I don't know. Maybe it was, like, really terrible shit, but... Um, moments afterwards, I was just, I remember being really spacey, I remember feeling a really weird high, almost like you smoke weed, but it wasn't quite the, the normal high high too, it was almost like a body high too, like it was really weird, it was like the weirdest experience, and many people say that they all have different experiences, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to relate to, uh, relate to any of you on this, but... <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to relate to any of you on this topic, so I started getting really giggly at first. I was like, I don't know if it's just giggly, but um, I just remember being like, very giggly. And um, I started laughing at something. I think I stared at my friend and he kept pulling his hair. And I looked at him and I was like, look at the girl. And he's like, shut the fuck up, idiot. <laughs> and then we just both started cracking up. We were dying. And we were just laughing and laughing, staring at each other. We'd look away, stop laughing. We'd look back at each other, start dying again. Um, we were just having a funny time. The spotter, was he was making it way better. He was, like, laughing at us. And we were just, it was one big laugh fest for, like, the first 30 minutes. And um, that was probably just the weed. Maybe, but, I don't know. I've heard other people say acid makes them laugh. So after, like, this point, I was still really high. Um, you know, little, little, little vibrations seemed like my body it wasn't like tripping balls, I could see mushrooms everywhere, like it wasn't anything like that, it wasn't some Alice in Wonderland shit, like I said I only took one tab, but one tab for me is kind of a lot. So, I went to the bathroom, so I ran to the bathroom, and um, I remember looking in the mirror at myself, I was very clear, um, it was just very clear, I feel like I could like, I, feel, I felt like I could almost put it in the mirror and touch myself on the face. Like it was so vivid and weird. Um, that's what, that's the weird thing about tripping. Sometimes people have weird experiences like this. So I started peeing and I remember when my piss was hitting the water, I remember the echo of the sound it made. It was like, and it, it almost freaked me out. It was really nasty for some reason. I shut my eyes when I started. This was such a bad idea. I was peeing in the bowl and I, I felt like it echoed.
echo off the walls, and it, it made such a weird, trippy, like, sound to me. It was because the acid was in me. It was just, it sounded so different and so weird. Um, and I just remember, like, almost feeling like I was at, like, a place with water. And it was, obviously, I was at a place with water, but it was just, I felt like I was in some nature environment. It was so weird. And when I got done peeing, I remember standing there with, like, my dick just chilling there. I didn't even, like, I sat there for like a minute after I was done peeing, just staring at the water. And I was, like, taking a look at, like, I know it's just nasty, but I was taking, like, I was staring into the bubbles of the water and, like, I was just like, wow, like, this is weird, I don't look so clear. And I, I flushed the toilet, the sound kind of scared me, I'm not even lying, the sound creeped me the fuck out. And then I looked at the door, I remember I stared at the door for a good long time before I left the bathroom. And I looked at it, and I, it just looked so, like, weird, I remember. And I remember the wooden pattern on the door looked like it was slowly curving. The wooden pattern on the door, it looked like it was slowly in, out, in, out, like making a line. And I was just like, what the fuck is this? Like, and when that happened, that's when it kind of went bad. I, I looked at it and I just started like freaking out. And I was like, oh my God, what the fuck? Like I started freaking out. <laughs> And, because, you know, when you see something moving that shouldn't be moving, I, it just creeped me out, like, and I looked at it, and I was like, fuck this, and I immediately opened the door and walked downstairs, and I was like, I went downstairs, and I went to look at my friend and say, dude, I just had the weirdest experience ever, and when I went to look at him and say that, he, like, he had his hands down on his, like, on his face, his hands were on his face, and it looked like he was crying. Now, when I looked at the kid who looked at like his hands in his head, like, in his his head in his hand, sorry, and I looked over at the spotter kid, and the spotter was like, dude, I don't know what's wrong with him, he like, looked at me, he wasn't crying, he just put his like, face down his hands, I don't know what's wrong with him, so, at this point, I was just like, kind of freaking out, because you know, anxiety was really a factor in this, so when you're tripping, you can still think normally, like, you're not retarded, and I remember circulating all these thoughts in my head, thinking, oh no, what if he's dying, what if he has to go to the hospital, we're gonna get caught, we're gonna get in trouble, I'm gonna be responsible for this kid's death, like, I was freaking the fuck out, and then one of these thoughts circulating through my head, a panic attack was and if you have a panic attack or you're tripping, it's the worst fucking experience you will ever have in your life, it feels like you're dying, you can't control your heartbeat, you can't control your breathing, it's terrible, and, um, that's where the trip went fuzzy, a lot of, um, a lot of the adrenaline from the panic attack completely took over the LSD effect. And I was still tripping, but it was so dumbed down because of this bullshit panic I was having. And I was freaking out there on the couch for at least 10 minutes while this kid looks like he's crying. And I keep tapping on him, like, dude, what's wrong? What's wrong? Put your head up. And he puts his head up, and the fucker is laughing. He's crying. He's literally, like, laughing so hard, he's crying. And I was like, what's wrong, man? He's like... He's just, he's like, oh, that's so funny, oh my god, since you've been in the bathroom, I've been dying laughing. I can't really imitate what he sounded like, but he was fucking, like, voice all cracky, he was dying laughing. And I was like, oh, well, that's a relief, but still, since all of this adrenaline was already in my body, you can't just make it go away. If you've ever had a panic attack, you guys know what I'm talking about, it's when the adrenaline is, it's when you freak out so much to, to the fact that adrenaline comes into your like, bloodstream. And, you know, once your adrenaline's there, you can't get it away unless you run, run like a mile. So I'm sitting here freaking out. My heart's racing, and I just don't know what to do. So I had to sit there and do breathing exercises for, like, a straight two hours. It was so bad. After, like, an hour, it dumbed down, obviously. The panic attack did, but it made the trip so much worse because it was still there. You know, it was minor, but it was so minor because all that adrenaline was powering the LSD and, like, it was crazy, just all, all of the adrenaline feeling in my blood, like, took over the feeling of the LSD, and that's why I didn't trip good. So, I mean, I guess you could say the first, like, hour of the trip was okay, but from that point on, it just dumbed down and was really shitty. So that's kind of, like, why I had, like, more of a, a, a bad trip, as people would call it. Um, it really was bad, but, um, that's, honestly, after that, we had to sit through my friend's trip, which was, uh, pretty cool, he didn't, I got to see what it was, you know, what he was thinking, and I, it was completely different from what I was thinking, you know, we were thinking two different things when we tripped, but, um, you know, there was still some minor little, you know, hallucinations, some audio code, like, 
And um, I was sitting there eating, and then it hit me. I was like, damn, like, oil is really fucking potent. Like, I wonder how this is going to be. Because I've, I've always smoked bulls that you let the hive get to you, creep on you, you know, gets there. And um, I got done with the burger, and I went to his house, and I still kind of wasn't thinking. I didn't really realize how, like, how crazy this is actually going to be. So, I, and keep in mind, guys, I used to be very interested in dabs. I used to always want to try it, and I was really into it. I, I told Cody this. I used to, like, go on Google and look into dabs and shit like that. So, I go to this, this kid's house, knock on the door. He lets us in. The, the whole house reeks. He was smoking. And I looked at my end table in the living room. He had Netflix on. And he had his, uh, his PS3 was on. He had Netflix on it. He had two bombs and an oil rig. We were, like, hyped. So, he gave me this thing called a dabber, or I don't know, it might be called other things in other places, but uh, it's like a metal, a metal looking, uh, if you've ever seen a pair of tweezers, it looks like someone ripped a pair of tweezers and had it was like a weird metal thing, and it holds this weird, like, long piece, it almost looks like a fucking booger, it, like, straight up, like it, and it, like, it, it was pretty nasty looking, but it, it's cool, like, I don't know, if you've ever seen oil or uh, a dab, it looks pretty sick, and, and it hung. And it was hanging off this metal stick. And he's like, okay, I'm going to blow towards this nail. Or, uh, and um, you're going to have to uh, quickly put it into the nail, lower it in, and move it in a circular motion while inhaling through the oil rig. And I was like, okay. So he starts heating up this nail. Or uh, he got like the blow torch. He got it on the fucking uh, the metal piece. And um, I see it getting like colored. And it gets to this really bright orange color like it was burnt. And uh, that's what I knew. Like, I've seen videos of people dabbing. I knew it was my cue to uh, lower the uh, string of the dab in. So I start lowering it in while inhaling. You know, it's bubbling, making that sound. I wish I could make that sound for you, but I was lowering it in. It's bubbling, and the smoke starts to fill up. It's filling really quick. I lowered the whole thing in, and I just immediately, biggest hit, like, biggest just sucked in everything. All the smoke at one time. Everything went in. Now, um, on this oil rig, there really wasn't, like, I don't, I don't even think there, you're, most of them don't have carbs on them or anything, so you can't, like, fill it up, let go of the carb, it all comes in, you just have to inhale while putting the, uh, dab in. So, um, I inhaled the dab, and then, like, I immediately started coughing, I got that big hit feeling, I just, like, take a big hit of a bong and start coughing, and I was just coughing and coughing and coughing, and I just kept coughing. Now, um, this whole time I was coughing, I didn't realize it, but this high smacked me in the face. Like, I was just sitting there coughing, and then, like, the minute I stopped coughing and looked up, my eyes were just, like, beat red. They felt like my eyes had a heartbeat to them. I was stoned as fuck. It was the quickest high I've ever gotten in my entire life, and I'm just sitting here like, holy shit. And, um, you really do get so stoned on your stuff. It's one of the most potent things I've ever, obviously, it's concentrated. You see something potent, but it was the craziest shit I've ever smoked in my life. I remember looking around the room just being like, oh my god, this, I, I looked at my friend and I started laughing because it was so funny, man, I'm like, this hit me so fast, and I started laughing, and, um, yeah, no, I just rode the high, it was a good high, I remember we ordered some pizza, we just hung out and we played PlayStation 3, he actually had the, uh, The Last of Us, um, he just bought The Last of Us, it's like a zombie game for PS3, it was really fun, we played that, and, uh, it was a really good experience, not bad at all, um, dabbing really won't hurt you as long as you enter it. You know, as long as you do it common collectively, you don't even have to know that much about it. Just make sure that someone's not making you smoke something that's not a dab. But, um, yeah, it was really cool. And, um, I've done it, like, a few times after that. I was really hooked on dabbing for a while, but then I just went back with the flower because that's my favorite thing to do. But, um, yeah, that was my first time dabbing. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's one of my favorite stories, honestly. It's not that crazy. I just thought it was cool to share the experience. Um, a few of my friends took dabs after me, and we all just kind of enjoyed the high. It, it really hits you like you are stoned. You cannot think properly. I remember, like, that's literally one, probably one of the highest times. It's probably one of the highest I've ever been, but I actually have a separate story for that called the highest I've ever been, so that'll be out soon. But if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button. It really does help support my channel. I love you guys so much. I'll see you guys tomorrow. This has been Luna. Peace. What is going on guys, Austin FFA here, or Luna. So, um, today is a crazy story. Uh, I haven't done, like, an insane, like, story in a while. I know you guys really love them, and just...
just for some reason I haven't had the time to. Um, I don't know. I just like my sleeping schedule is just crushed. Like not even kidding. I go to bed at like six in the morning. I wake up at like five thirty. So uh, gotta get that fixed. And I'm making this at like one in the morning right now. But whatever. So um, yeah, um, I'm kind of. I don't know. I, I love doing stories, but I want to figure out some new things to do. So if you guys have any suggestions, leave a comment below of what you think I should do for videos. Anyway, that's out of the, um, you know, the way. Now I can get to the story. So the the title is called Getting Offered Serious Drugs. Now it's a story, and I, I don't even want to put, like, one drug in it because there's a lot of different ones involved. Now you guys know when um, I used to smoke, it was uh, quite the... You know, just weed. That's all I would stick to. I would only smoke weed because it doesn't really have any serious effects on you. You know, besides anxiety sometimes, but that's not a big deal. So I used to smoke weed, and it never really bothered me, and I used to love it. And yeah, so, oh, speaking of that, um, tomorrow I'm going to try it again. <laughs> I know you guys are probably really hyped about that. I tweeted about it. If you guys want to see a story on the video... Uh, I'm going to upload a story tomorrow on the come down of the high. So when I'm still stoned, I'm going to make a commentary about it. So uh, make sure you, uh, you're you hyped. You know, if you're hyped, drop a like. Comment below if you're hyped. Um, so yeah, I was at this party. Okay, I'm just going to jump right into the story now. I just want to let you guys know. So I was at this party, okay. And I, go to, I used to go to a lot of parties last year. And I just found it fun. I don't know, just... It was a cool thing to do. Everyone, I've, all my friends loved it. So, um, I had a few friends at the time. I still have these these friends come over all the time. Um, a few of them actually been in videos. But I have a few friends who can drive, and um, yeah, we used to just drive around the town, and we would wait to get a hookup on a party or something. So, um, I wasn't the party kid. I didn't have any hookups to get to parties. But my friend knew a lot of people from my school who would get to parties a lot. So, my buddy told me that he had a really, like, there was some really cool party going on, like, oh, it's a banger, and, um, this is before I had any, like, social anxiety, so I used to really, like, not care, I used to love going to these huge crowded parties, and being all hot and sweaty and nasty, so, this kid, um, me and my friend, this kid, we drove to this party, now, the, the party was being held in a ranch, which is, uh, actually where I live, it's like a, uh, it's a smaller house, it's just kind of like a one-story house with a basement, and it was in the basement. Now, I live in a basement, basically. Um, it's like a whole floor to myself. I love it. It's sick. But when you try and fit, like, over 200 people in a basement, it doesn't work. Hi, I'm Kyle Bush, and this is the new Nos Rowdy drink. It tastes like victory. Yeah. Yes, victory. Hey, what's good, guys? So, uh, today, for once in a long time, I'm talking about something that was completely my mistake. And, you know, recently I've talked a lot about stuff involved with other people. This was me. This was a very, very, uh, dark time in my childhood. And I hope you enjoy it. I think it's fucking hilarious to talk about now. Please leave a like if you enjoy. And I'm just gonna start this shit, because no other way to really go about it, am I right? It's a fucking story, but yeah. So, this happened when I was 13, and it's about how I got caught shoplifting, okay? Now, shoplifting, stealing shit... It's illegal. It's bad. Don't fucking do it, okay? Take this video as a learning experience. Put yourself in my... Oh, put yourself in my shoes. That's gonna make more sense later. Fucking ironic. Basically, yeah, just don't do this. Anyway, I was 13 when this happened, and my mom needed groceries, okay? So, we went to the grocery store. Now, right next to the grocery store is a bunch of other little stores. It was like a plaza, and one of the stores was a shoe store, and they sold like all types of shoes, right? Now, around this time, I cannot lie, 13-year-old Luna was not doing well with style, okay? His shoes, now, they weren't light-up Skechers, they weren't, like, light-up fake Yeezys or, like, Heelys. Side note, why the fuck did Heelys ever go out of style? Heelys are so goddamn convenient and just awesome. I'm gonna bring those fuckers back. Anyway, back on track. So I decided to tell my mom, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna go to the shoe store down the plaza. Just meet me over there when you're done shopping, okay? She's like, no problem. So I walked into the shoe store, and I already knew what was going down. I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna fucking give me some new shoes. I don't got any money, but I'm gonna get some shoes somehow, okay? I was feeling like a scumbag little thievness. I don't even know what I'm saying. But I felt that feeling, you know what I mean? The feeling I'm about to do something I'm gonna regret. Now this store was fucking small. It was no joke, like the tiniest shoe store I've ever been in. And I walked into the weirdest situation, right? Like I open the door, the beeping thing goes off, and open the door that scares the fuck out of me. And the lady behind the counter looks at me like, what the fuck are you even doing here? 
you're a kid, like we all know you can't afford shoes, they're really tiny. So I walk to the back, right? They're kind of like looking at me, and I wait. They take their focus off me and go back to what they're doing. So there's like two people, one was behind the counter, and there was another like bigger guy who kind of just like roamed and walked around the store and helped people. And I'm sure like, you know, made sure everything was all good. Now I walk to the back with these fans, right? And I find this pair that's really cool, right? And I open them. Now, whoever put these in the box, they were already tied, but they were tied together. And the knot that was holding these two shoes together was fucking stronger than Chuck Norris after just doing a line of coke on the dick. Like, it, it was just not gonna budge. So I just put them on my feet while they're tied together. You could still walk, it just felt a little bit restricted, right? And I put the old shoes in the box. And I'm like, you know what? This is how people do it. I only live once. I have to fucking do this. Like, I just, I gotta do it. Stop being a pussy, Austin. Now, you guys never had this mindset. If you want to do something to push out of your comfort zone, you know, push the boundaries, maybe, like, when you're 18, go to a professional place and skydive or ride a roller coaster. Just don't be like me when I was 13 and thought, damn, I'm really living life on the edge, stealing a $40 fucking pair of shoes that don't even look that cool. Anyway, back to the story. I put my old shoes back in the box. I put the box back on the shelf, and I now have the nice new shoes on my feet, right? Still tied together, strong as fuck. But that wasn't my main priority. I was like, you know what? I can still walk in these. I'll untie the knot when I'm home and have time to do it. So I'm walking real slowly towards the exit door, right? Now the bigger, kind of buff guy was at the back of the store doing something, just distracted. And the girl at the front was looking at me. And she was like, hey, can I help you find something? And she didn't see my feet yet. And I was like, oh, thank you. But my mom's just kind of shopping at the grocery store nearby. And I walked in here because I was bored. And she's like, oh, okay. Have a great day. I was like, you too. And I open the door, right? The beep goes off. It scares the shit out of me. And I'm outside, right? Like, I step foot on the sidewalk outside to the rest of the plaza. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm free. I just got away with that. Like, I'm so badass. But deep down, I knew. I was like, I'm a sad, sad fucking human. Now, obviously, I didn't say any of this stuff. I was just hyped up inside my head. But as the door is closing, right? The three beeps are about to go off to say that the door is closed. I hear, hey. And I was like, oh, no, it's the buff guy. Oh, he realized it. So I start running, right? And the minute I pull my foot high up off the ground, the knotted together laces stop me from doing so, and I fall flat on my fucking face. And I lift my face off the ground after falling, and I just see blood coming from my mouth. Not enough to be concerned about, but I definitely hit some tooth, and I turn around, and I can just see the guy looking over me. He's like, did you steal those shoes? I was like, what? What shoes? Like, no. He's like, the shoes you're wearing, they're tied together still. I was like... Nah, he said, take those off. I was like, alright, so I took them off, right? My dumbass, not only forgot to untie the knotted laces, I forgot to take the fucking padding out on the inside, so, uh, my feet weren't even working at full fucking capacity here. Anyway, he saw that I was very young and was bleeding from my mouth and kind of had some sympathy for me, which he really shouldn't have had because I was a dickhead, but he was like, where's the parents? I was like, my mom's shopping right over there, and I pointed to the grocery store, and he just goes, go over there with her never come back. I was like, can I go in your store quick and get my shoes back? He's like, what do you mean? I was like, well, I put the old shoes in the box. He's like, Jesus, come inside. And I ran in there really quick, grabbed my shoes out the box, and ran out that front door so fast. It was so goddamn awkward. And luckily, on the run out, I didn't fall and break my fucking face this time. I think I didn't break my face, but I didn't fall and, you know, damage myself. Anyway, ran back to the grocery store, grabbed a napkin from the front, like, bakery thing, and, you know, wiped off my face, got kind of cleaned up. And luckily, I didn't actually break my teeth. I fell, and, like, my teeth bit into my uh, lip, and I was bleeding. But I didn't actually, like, hurt my teeth, which is great. That would have been nice, breaking my fucking teeth for stealing a damn pair of shoes. Anyway, I ended up getting out of it without, like, really any serious issue. It's kind of funny, because when my mom met up with me, she's like, Hey, do you want to go back to that store? I'll buy you some shoes. And I was like, no, no. She's like, are you sure? Like, I'm going to get you some. I was like, no, later in the week we'll do it. She's like, oh, okay. I was like, yeah, just later in the week. And we actually went, but we went to a completely different store. I forced her to take me to the mall instead because I was too scared of going in there again. But that's pretty much the end of the story. That's how I got fucking caught trying to steal shoes that were knotted together. And how I tripped over the laces and hurt myself, got caught, embarrassed the fuck out of myself. And they probably still talk about me to this day known as the dumbass kid that tried that. Moral of the story is, don't be 13-year-old Luna. I hope you guys enjoyed this little story. Please leave a like if you found it funny or enjoyed it at any point. Subscribe if you're new. Leave your stories in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Peace.
So before this video starts, I just want to talk about something quick. For everyone that's been asking about merch and shirts and hoodies and stuff like that, the link's going to be top link in the description. Uh, it's limited time, it's like two weeks, but if you decide to buy some merch from my store thing, please leave your phone number. Let me call a bunch of you who buy something. So, yeah, anyway, to the video. Hey, what's up guys? So, uh, today I'm talking about something that happened in the very beginning of my YouTube channel career, I guess you could fucking say. I really don't know. Something I completely forgot about, which is funny, because this is usually something that would stick in my head for years, and I guess it kind of did because I ended up remembering it, but at the same time, I've had so many occurrences similar to this that it just kind of got pushed down, I guess. And this is something I almost bought into, I guess. Like, I almost went through with this, and it would have been bad, and it would have been stupid, and maybe some people that might go through the same thing can uh, learn from it, I guess. Kind of funny, so I hope you enjoy this. Leave a like if you do. Be see if we can get 10k and start this. So in the very beginning of YouTube, I learned very quickly that there's a lot of fucking assholes online. Kind of knew that beforehand anyway. But when you do YouTube, you run into a certain breed of them. And I call them the spooky people. The people that gather information about you. Shit that you didn't even know about yourself. And just tell it to you. And they're like, hey, I got all your info, bro. Do this for me or I'm going to leak it everywhere. Send these people to your house. Do this shit. Those people, I've talked about them many times. You know, you go to sleep and it's outside your window with laptops, sleeping around, heavily breathing because they ran, like, for two minutes to your house and they don't ever work out. I'm just fucking around, but just the weird people online. I'm sure some of you have dealt with them. One of them in particular I met around 2,000 subscribers I had a very unique experience with, and I'm going to talk about it right now, so I hope you enjoy. Let's start with it. So this started as a very normal day for me. I woke up. I actually had a job on this day to do. I had to go to my friend's house and help his dad with flooring which I don't fucking do. I have no idea how to do that stuff. He was just teaching me. I figured it was extra money, so why not, right? So about halfway through this uh, job I had, I had a break, and I was sitting in my friend's kitchen on my phone just going through Twitter like I usually do when I'm on breaks or just doing stuff. And I read one tweet at me, which stood out because it had my address on it. And it was like, hey, Austin. And it just had my address. I was like, okay. Spooky shit, man. Got a real fucking spooky guy right here. He's got my address. Probably gonna, like, show up to my house with pillows and beat me with them or some shit. I didn't really worry about it at first, because I was like, you know what, whatever. Then another ten minutes goes by, I don't get any more tweets from this guy, I just ignored him, and I went back to working, right? Finally got done with the job later, and I go home. I was just super excited to go home, play some video games, take a fucking break from doing stuff I have no idea how to do, and just be cool, right? I walk in my front door to my house, and I see three boxes of pizza three different fucking pizza places on my table and immediately i'm like who the hell came to my house like who orders three different pizza brands what's the point in that so i go over to my mom's room ask her what the hell happened and why there's so much pizza on the kitchen table and she says it was in your name you ordered it i was like no i didn't i was out all day she's like well i don't know you ordered it and you're gonna have to pay me back for it and it just clicked in my head i'm like yep weird kid on twitter he had my address he ordered it so I immediately open my phone, right, check Twitter, and I see, like, no joke, 30 tweets in a row at me with just my address, my full name, my dad's full name, just, like, weird info. I'm like, how the fuck did this guy get this? So I go downstairs, I work on a video, kind of freaking out, okay? I was really freaking out, because I'm like, do I talk about this? Like, what do I do? And then this guy hits me with a tweet saying, DM me, and I'm like, okay, I gotta do it. I just, I gotta talk to this guy, because if you talk to him, they go away, right? That's how it works. Wrong. Don't fucking do that. I buy into this guy's shit, I follow him. I was like, hey, dude, can you, can you stop, like, tweeting my address, man? Like, I got, I got people living with me. Like, they get bothered by this. It's kind of annoying. Like, me and Satan share a room. He gets angry when the doorbell rings at night. Can you not? I didn't actually say that, but I did ask him nicely. I was like, hey, man, can you stop tweeting me my address? I don't want to be out there like that. And he's like, yeah, no problem, dude, but under one condition. 
and I was like, alright, what could it be? Like, shout out. Like, I have 2k subs. What are you gonna get me? He goes, I want your channel. And immediately I was like, yeah, it's a good joke. And I said that, I was like, haha. And he replies, he's like, I'm not kidding. He's like, channel, or I'm just gonna swat you and your grandma. And immediately I got confused, and I replied, I was like, my grandma. And he sends me my dead grandma's address. That's how fucking weird this guy was. He was about to send police to a dead person's house. So I was like, what the fuck? And it's so bad, because I considered giving this guy my channel password. I was like, dude, I don't want those random people living there now to get the police to their door, and me and my family to deal with that. Like, I should just do it. I only have 2K subs. I can make a new channel, right? I actually almost considered giving this motherfucker my YouTube. Could you imagine if I did that? What would it be now? Like, I really wonder if, like, hacking tutorials or, like, I don't fucking know, bagpipe videos. I don't know. But luckily, I talked to a friend before I went through with this, and I was like, yo, this guy wants my YouTube in return to not post my info and my family's info everywhere and to send, like, the police and shit to my house. He's already sent other stuff. And my friend's like, dude, these losers literally thrive off that shit. Like, if you do that, he's just gonna leak your stuff even more and add your channel. Like, don't do that, man. And I was like, you're right. You're really actually right. And he's like, yeah, you're doing well. Fuck this guy. Block him. So I block him, right? And sure enough, like, 30 tweets off different accounts start coming at me. I think it was just the one dude on a bunch of different accounts. Telling me to add him on Skype or else. So I was like, you know what? I'll add him on Skype. Maybe I'll just be able to, like, talk to him and he'll fuck off. I add him on Skype kind of a bad decision but kind of a good decision because this dumbass this quote-unquote hacker had his personal cell phone number on his skype account so i had a skype immediately got a cell phone number i just called him up i was like hey dude you still want to leak info and i called him off skype i didn't call him off like my phone and gave him my number i just called him on skype and yeah i just said i was like hey man still want to leak info he's like who the fuck is this i was like austin the kid who you're just targeting my address he's like how'd you get my number I was like, your Skype account that you tweeted me to add has your number on it. He's like, fuck, and he just hung up. Never heard from him again. He deleted his Twitter, <laughs> immediately just disappeared. All the tweets at me disappeared, and every time I tried to call this guy back, it just went to, like, a fucking error or something, like, he changed his number. And yeah, I've yet to hear from this guy ever since. I mean, I had 2K back then, so this was a long fucking time ago. I don't know what he's up to now. Hopefully being smarter, because, like, this is literally the story of the dumbest hacker I've ever came in contact with. And I've had legit people order pizza in my house and pay for it. How is that a troll or like a quote-unquote like scary thing to do to someone? You're literally giving someone free pizza. But yeah, I really can't call this guy dumb because my stupid fucking ass almost actually gave him my stuff. Like I almost bought into this idiot and I'm glad I didn't and I know a lot more now so that won't happen. But yeah guys, don't fall for stupid people's bullshit. Be careful online. I don't know. There's really no point to this story. I just thought it was a really like funny little close call. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So leave a like if you guys did. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Peace. Strange. My boss is a fucking bitch. Matter of fact, you can tell that whole I fucking quit. I just got a dollar for a raise. What the fuck is this? I can make my money on the train. Doing fucking flips. Barely got enough to go and break. Eat some fucking shit. And you always wonder why I'm late for my fucking shit. I don't smile enough. I know. My shirt's never tucked. Staying in the jungles of Tanoa now for about two months, sleeping outside, living off the land, fighting people to come into my jungle, and it wasn't a very nice existence. It was dangerous, cold, wet, and every day.
day at a certain time, there used to be two vehicles that passed through my little bit of jungle, and I always wondered where they were going. So one day, I just decided to follow these guys. It was a really rainy day, I was cold, and I was hoping that maybe they would lead me to their base. two cars ended up somewhere it's going to become a very special place for me. After following the cars, it led me to this base. And as soon as I got there, I started to see movement all around the base. expecting my friend Frank to come in like two weeks time and then I had a base where we could feel secure and then explore the space would be So I went to the traders and got some satchel charges and I started setting up and points around the roads that led to the base. And it wasn't long before the guys whose base was Sometimes in life, the more scared you are, you just got to face up to your fears. So, I laid down the satchel charge, my last stand in case anybody did come. If I heard anyone while I was asleep, I could just blow up the base. It would probably kill me, but it would kill them too. And then, I started to hear shots in the distance. And I knew that my time was coming to an end. So, sometimes the best defense... trying to get 
get to the base, and also a chopper landed full of guys preparing to attack the base. I knew that I'd rather go out fighting, standing tall, rather than sitting in the base and waiting to get attacked and getting killed in my sleep. So I fought long into the night to try and save our little base. managed to hold back the guys that night, but the next morning, straight away, they were back at it again. I was tired, I hadn't slept, and these guys were just coming back again. This time, in a little bird, they landed at an airfield just behind my base, and knew they were coming into it. I managed to kill the pilot, but the passenger jumped out, run to safety, and I knew they had spotted me. Luckily for me, the zombies, they'd done their job. They moved in on him, they broke his legs, and he had to move. really working out for us good now. I managed to get that little bird and that was just going to help me so much. I could pick up Frankie in it and if we had to move baits we could use the chopper to go and explore the island. Things were great but I didn't have the keys for the chopper so what I had to do was leave it out on one of the little islands there and then go and collect it at night time leave it near the base so I could protect it. After collecting the little bird, I just had a sense of relief. Maybe that dream I had that night was just me being tired or emotional. And I was going to make it through this situation. I really felt good. And I couldn't wait until Frankie come and I could show him the little bird. Things were going great.
I've got to say, I did, I did miss you, Steve. How's it going? Oh. What the fuck, Steve? <laughs> you got a special place <laughs> in my heart. <laughs> Even though <laughs> you do well, evil fights. <laughs> such a long journey. How's it going? Right. Well, pretty good. But if you spawn into this class, you spawn out at sea. Oh, so I came in on a little boat. So you're like a pirate. <laughs> yeah. Did you lose your uh, parrot in the journey? Suggest you probably do take the blue one because let's just say I'm, oh god I've made this one my my yeah it, it's well worn <laughs> exactly it's uh, <laughs> it's had the sadder touch but also something really cool it took me quite a while to sort this out is this laptop you can go in this and then look at the cameras around here I've got one on the front of the base and one on the tree out there oh sweet yeah it's actually really really cool map of this. Yeah. Not the right island, but that don't matter. Oh. We can still use it. I was using that as a freaking... I had my dinner on that, mate. Is that a map? What the... Dude, I could... Oh, yeah. <laughs> it actually is the wrong thing, isn't it? So what we, What do you... Uh, have you got enough, then, to do this wall outside? Or... Uh, no, no. I, I was actually about to say... I mean, I was just on my way to Georgetown. If you want to come with us, I actually need some supplies. I need some more woods. I need nails. We need food. We need ammunition. Because it is, yeah, we have got a fair bit to wall around if you're going all the way around here. Yeah, yeah. Mate, I'm so happy to see you. Should we, should we go to Georgetown? Do you want to come? Actually, I should probably lock the freaking door. All this security. Yeah. Uh, is Steve like a, is, is he like a guard cow then? Oh, yeah, dude. He, he will. Better, uh, than, better than a Rottweiler. Have you ever seen what a rhinoceros does to mark his territory? No, a hippo, what it does to mark his territory. Have you seen it? No, no. It just but... poos and then it flips its tail really, really fast and just sprays Oh, poop. yeah, yeah, yeah. Helicopter poop. Oh, Helicopter that's, poop. That's, that's, <laughs> that is what Steve does. <laughs> I've actually ah. seen him doing that. <laughs> they think they can fly, you know. <laughs> so that's it. Imagine if you saw one flying just from its tail, like, <laughs> like big fat. <thing. laughs> yeah, yeah, you eat a lot of grass and poo on, poo on people if they come, ah. Steve, right? We'll be back. <laughs> we'll be back, Steve. <laughs> it's so funny, I watched a video of that the other day. <laughs> Oh dear. Yeah. Uh, you drive, because I don't know. I've never been on this map. Okay. Now let's go to Georgetown. <laughs> Why, what's this 
human combustion then? I've never seen that before. What, humans can just catch on fire? Yeah, for no reason at all. Don't they have to have, like, smoked e-cigarettes? <laughs> <laughs> no. What, what's the deal with it then? Human combustion. They just, for some reason, a human could just catch fire. And then once they catch fire, this is a bit grim now, that they could, they just burn like a candle. Because the own, their own fat keeps burning. <laughs> so, are you for real? Oh, this is for real, yeah. That, uh, that's, that's something you read on 4chan. This is the uh, supermarket here, dude. Yeah. Turn left. I'll close the door so they don't come in. Uh, yeah, we need to find nails. Oh, that's cool, isn't it? It's a bit scary. Okay, that's what happens to bandits, Sadie. Do you think this was the guy who wrote that, or...? I wouldn't have thought so. I'd have thought somebody else would have written that and then shot the bandit guy. <laughs> <laughs> Stop killing people. The only person he's killed is himself. Written in his own blood. Okay, it's gone. Oh, my God! That was so loud! It was so loud! Dude, just the sound of you running that over has probably attracted another load of zombies. Deafened me! <laughs> I thought we crashed. <laughs> After getting the nails and some food and some supplies and also meeting a new friend, it was back to the base to relax for the night. Get out of the hill. Oh my god. Are you okay? Shoot from the road. Yeah, the shoot from the road. Yeah, I can see the lights and the thing. Stay behind the concrete, dude. It is bulletproof. Did you get him? Did you get him? Oh, Whoa! What the hell was? Watch it! Watch it! Do be careful! Be careful! I think they just shot. Out. They've blown up our car, oh dude. Oh my god! They just killed Steve. Fucking dickheads! What the fuck, dude? We noticed that the guys that raided the base had night vision on. So our plan was to flick the floodlights on, that would temporarily blind them, and then we could make a run for it. Three, two, one, go. Light on. I'm going, I'm going. Let's go, let's go. They're blind, they're blind, they can't okay, see. Okay. Run, 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 run. Coming, coming. Okay, oh, he nearly hit me. I'm turning the light up. Run, run, Sada. I'm going, I'm going.